The IBM PC Junior is regarded as one of the biggest flops in the computer industry, serving as a cautionary tale that proves even companies as large as IBM can make monumentally costly mistakes. The media would like you to believe that the PC Junior failed because of its infamous keyboard, but that's not the full story. In this 40th anniversary retrospective, we're going to examine the entire life cycle of the PC Junior and determine the real reason it failed. Along the way, we'll cover its true strengths and weaknesses, the legacy it left on the computer game industry, and the community of hackers that keep its memory alive into the 21st century. First, I'll cover how the PC Junior was born. Why did IBM, of all companies, decide to get into the home computer market in the early 1980s? We'll cover what the PC Junior was and what it wasn't, what it did well and what it did very poorly. We'll also cover why it flopped so badly. Why was it a complete failure in the marketplace? And no, it wasn't just the keyboard. I'll present an opinion on how I feel it changed the industry anyway. Finally, we'll cover the PC Junior today. Communities, hacks, homebrews, and some unearthed hordes. So to understand why IBM decided to get into this market, let's go back to the late 1970s. Mass production of the microprocessor finally enables affordable home computers. Now what is a home computer? It was a class of microcomputers marketed to the non-technical home consumer. So this would be, for example, dad to balance the checkbook as part of home finances, or some simple word processing, or education and games for the kids. Uh, even managing recipes, for example, for mom in the kitchen. I know that that sounds a bit like a stereotype, but that was the thinking back then. Initial success of the Apple II, the TRS-80, and the Commodore PET, which we now come to call the trinity of 1977 personal computers, led to more than 10 product lines in this space in two years. So by 1982, over 600,000 home computers were sold at an average price of $530. So let's look at this time period to get a better example of what IBM was facing in the early part of 1982. We have the Apple II, the TRS-80, and the Commodore PET still out there in the market, but then Atari and the Commodore with their VIC-20 decided to get into this. TRS-80 color computer series were created, and then over on the other side of the pond we had the Sinclair and the BBC Micro. This was a, a market that was growing, and it was not going to shrink. By February of 1982, IBM PC sales have taken way off. They were 600% more than predicted, selling at least 60,000 units by February. And so this is what prompted IBM to form a task force to develop a home computer. From an oral history I had with uh, Gary Webb, I was very shocked to learn that most of the engineering team members were fairly young. They were aged 22 to 25. In January of 1983, rumors leak that IBM is developing new computers, the Peanut, Rover, and Popcorn. Peanut eventually became the PC Junior, and in fact, the press constantly kept referring to whatever IBM was developing as the Peanut. In fact, they kept calling it the Peanut, even after the actual name of the system was announced. IBM wanted to erode the large home computer market primarily dominated by the Apple II, and so the initial peanut design was for that market. It was small, it was easy to use, and unintimidating. You could have it on your kitchen counter, you could have it in the living room, a home computer not threatening at all. During the design phase, the marketing department wanted peanut to grab a little bit more market share than the home computer market through secondary sales to businessmen and also education, like schools. So Peanut would now be for the home and the classroom and office markets. It sounds like they're trying to develop a system for every single market. Keep that in the back of your head as you watch this entire series. You did mention educational uses for your children, as I recall. Well, that's right. I think it's time that the kids got to know computers. They sure could use some help with their math. Uh, <laughs> their homework's gonna kill me. <laughs> I think the IBM PC Junior is the computer for your family. It's very easy to learn, even for youngsters. I suppose it wouldn't be a bad idea if we could play some games on it, too. I like the idea of the family staying together for recreation. The more you say, the more I'm convinced that the IBM PC Junior is the computer for you. Well, how come? If it's from IBM, isn't it more complicated? Uh, not at all. It was designed for home use, so it's simple and powerful at the same time. 
We have an IBM PC at the office. I don't suppose there's any way I could take some work home. That's probably asking too much. PC and PC Junior are compatible, as their names imply. They even use the same microprocessor. It seems like PC Junior can handle about anything I can give it. Remember, it's a personal computer, but a very powerful one. With the options available for PC Junior, you can tailor it for exactly the purposes you want. The anticipation for this still unnamed home computer was incredibly high. IBM's brand and reputation were ironclad in the 1980s. Uh, here are some quotes. Once it enters a market, IBM is likely to stay. Another phrase from that time, no one ever got fired for buying IBM. 1.3 million IBM PCs sold in the years between 1981 and 1983. Uh, and the New York Times also wrote that hundreds of thousands, perhaps more than a million, would be sold next year. The prediction of success of whatever IBM was cooking up was so great, it affected Apple's stock price. John Gantz wrote in InfoWorld in November of 83, Apple announced that earnings for its fourth fiscal quarter, ending September 30, would be a fraction of what they had been the year earlier. The peanut damage is done. Finally, on November 1st, 1983, IBM announced the Model 4860, also known as the PC Junior. Proudly introduces a bright little addition to the family. Name PC Junior. Weight 12 pounds. Small but powerful. PC Junior. Designed by IBM to make computing easy for everyone. PC Junior comes with bright ideas, like a keyboard that doesn't need a cord. It's called the Freeboard. There are picture instructions to help you get started and special overlays to help you find the right keys. You can get easy to use software like a word processing program and more surprises. Games and graphics your kids won't believe plus a starting price you won't believe. And with easy to add options, Junior can grow up real fast. PC Junior, the new family edition from IBM. <laughs> but they did not announce a ship date. A week later, PC Junior was shown at a live press conference, and industry reaction was a little mixed. Some people were very uh, bullish, for example, John Hillkirk, with the peanut, IBM is heralding a new era in the USA's home computer industry. Note, still calling it peanut. John Scully, then Apple president, of course, very bearish. I guess it's kind of what everyone expected. I don't think there were any surprises. Finally, the public got their hands on PC Junior during a live demonstration with many PC Juniors set up in a classroom at Comdex on November 28, 1983. Now, this footage comes courtesy of Dan Bricklin, who was at Comdex shooting video, and it's a fascinating record of uh, the first time the public actually got their hands on it. I want to comment on a few things uh, before we go watch some excerpts from the presentation. Uh, this being a business show, you can see businessmen in suits using a joystick to play Mineshaft, a cartridge game for the PC Junior. And then we're also going to see Sierra Homeward, which was made or customized for the PC Junior. Uh, very easy to use and supported the uh, introductory printer. As we zoom out, if you look at the keyboard, you'll see that there is a keyboard overlay on top of the keyboard. And then finally, we go into the classroom. There were over 50 PC Juniors here, and the front of the classroom was made up to look like a living room. It had uh, windows and a mock TV uh, bookcase and so on, uh, further solidifying IBM's dedication to trying to make this a friendly home computer. And now let's listen to some excerpts from this presentation. First of all, you are sitting in front of the enhanced version of the PC Junior. The entry level version has 64 KB of memory and two cartridge slots. The expanded version has the addition of a diskette drive, 128K of memory, and capability for 80 characters of text on the screen. Now with this set of system here, we will be, I will be demonstrating up in my living room the cordless keyboard, a very innovative feature of the IBM PC Junior. As you can see, no magic at all, uh, totally wired free. It uses an infrared link. Uh, very similar to the controller that you use for your remote television sets. Now, as you have already probably detected, you are firmly attached to your PC Juniors with the optional keyboard cord, and that is, you might suspect, in a room of this size, that's done to keep the folks from zapping their neighbors, and uh, you, would, you would get a whole lot of work done that way. You're also now getting 
a demonstration of the three voice capability of the PC Junior, which is an enhancement over uh, previous music capability of PC systems. This particular panel comes up and describes the four keys that are important for you to know how to use the PC sampler. Those are the escape key, which is the upper left-hand corner key to exit a program, the enter key, which is the L-shaped key to allow you to enter a program, and the right and left cursor movement keys, which are on the right-hand side of the keyboard, but you also can use the compact printers that are sitting on top of the PC generator to print it out, so if you wish to do that. But this is not a full-blown uh, word processing program, as you were likely to see, uh, rather that it, it is a representation of a correcting selectric type right. Now, it will, go through the, uh, it will go through the diagnostics, and then it will automatically load the sampler program for you. So why did IBM announce the PC Junior early, but no shipping date? Well, there's always the conspiracy theory angle, that IBM acted intentionally to hurt potential competitors' sales. If you announce your product early and people are on the fence about trying to buy it, then they will hold back their purchase until the new system is out. But the actual reasons were fairly mundane. They were technical, logistical, and financial. The IBM PC Junior repeatedly failed FCC certification due to too much radio frequency interference. The case was made of plastic to try to keep costs down. The PC Junior was actually finished in spring 1983, but it didn't pass FCC certification until September. And that's because IBM needed time to develop a process to effectively spray liquid metal to the inside of the plastic case to pass certification. Now the inside of a PC Junior case is gunmetal gray and it's a matte finish. However, early formulas of this used silver paint, which was shiny, and nickel paint, which was black. If you have a very early PC Junior or a known prototype, open it up. Your PC Junior might actually have a silver lining. IBM also needed time to get the manufacturing costs down. PC Junior cost $450 in parts alone to make. Finally, PC Junior starts shipping January 13, 1984, but in that announcement there is a small caveat about a limited supply. Well, this was the week of the Macintosh, IBM reported the start of volume shipments of the PC Junior this week. However, there were questions as to what volume really meant, as IBM warned that supplies would be limited. There were rumors that IBM was having problems due to parts shortages, but IBM said absolutely not. While IBM did start shipping January 13th, shipments to consumers were delayed all the way until March. And that's because retail locations got PC Junior shipments to serve as display units to try to sell the system before consumers had their orders fulfilled. The success of the IBM PC and IBM's reputation in the industry led people to believe that the PC Junior was effectively a guaranteed success. There were over 100 PC Junior specific books published in anticipation of PC Junior's eventual success. There was the Time Life step-by-step -step guide to the IBM PC Junior, which is notable for having some incredibly wonderful glamour shots <laughs> of the IBM PC Junior. Hey Junior, using IBM's most personal computer, was also published in late 83. Peter Norton wrote a lot about the PC Junior in technical magazines. He published two books, and the first one was Discovering the IBM PC Junior Home Computer. And there were also over 15 books dedicated to teaching kids how to program in BASIC on the PC Junior. Something else very surprising, there were no less than four magazines dedicated to the PC Junior. Junior, published by CW Communications. Peanut, published by Harcourt Brace Jovanovich. Computes PC and PC Junior, published by ABC, and PC Junior Magazine, published by Ziff Davis, the same publisher of PC Magazine. PC Junior Magazine also notable for shipping before the PC Junior did. Why so many magazines? As David Needle wrote in InfoWorld, they were started with the idea that the PC Junior would sell well in schools and homes, opening up a whole new era of PC applications worthy of a dedicated magazine. You have to remember, everyone thought IBM couldn't lose. So what happened next? Did IBM impossibly actually lose? In the next installment of this series, we'll cover the tech of the PC Junior, its advantages and disadvantages, what it got right and what it got wrong. Then we'll cover the reception of the PC Junior, its downfall, and the aftermath of that. And finally, we'll cover the legacy of the PC Junior, 
homebrews and hacks that people created to keep it alive, and where the PC Junior is today, and where you can find community support. I hope you'll join me for the next part of this 40th anniversary retrospective series on the PC Junior. If you're not currently subscribed to the Old School PC, why not subscribe so you don't miss the next installment? And feel free to go through our back catalog to see all the videos we've made about the first decade of computing and gaming on the IBM PC and compatibles.